All right. Hi, Elsie. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Haitian American Museum of Chicago virtual opening reception of our 2021 Truman College Student Art Exhibition. Every year, the Museum and Truman's Art Department, led by Ms. Stephanie Roberts, collaborates on an exhibition, and this year we are so happy to continue this tradition virtually. My name is Carlos Bossard, and I'm the Executive Director of the Museum. Again, it's great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us. The museum's mission is to promote Haitian art, culture, and history in metropolitan Chicago and surrounding communities, nationally and internationally, through advocacy, education, and supportive services. Education is at the core of our mission, and we are so glad to continue bringing insightful and meaningful lectures, programs, and exhibitions to the community. Before we begin, I do want to do just a little bit of housekeeping and let you know the format of today's event. First, this program is being recorded, and if you do not want to be seen on the camera and the recording, feel free to go ahead and turn off your video. Also, everyone was put on mute as they entered the room. Please remain on mute throughout the program to ensure everyone can hear clearly. Also, I am turning on right now um, the live transcript for auto-generated captioning. Um, this is just helping, again, accessibility as we continue to be um, accessible throughout the museum. And then lastly, after the presentations, uh, there will be a Q&A session with the students and, and with everyone here in the Zoom chat. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the program, feel free to go ahead and put those in the chat and we'll answer them properly at the end. Now, on behalf of the Haitian American Museum of Chicago and Truman's Art Department, Truman College Art Department, I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie Roberts um, to do a little introduction and uh, we'll start the program by showing all of the art in the exhibit. Great, thank you so much, Carlos. We first wanna thank the Haitian American Museum of Chicago for generously hosting us every year. It's great to have this continued partnership with them. You know, this is something that's especially nice since this is an uptown institution. It's a cultural institution, it's an international institution because, you know, we have such a rich international culture in Chicago. So it's, it's pretty awesome to have that resource right here in uptown. So thank you again. I want to thank Elsie for, especially for the longstanding partnership that we've had with you. Um, and Carlos, <clears throat> who has done the hard work of actually putting this exhibition together. He did all the sound editing. So this is not something that I am gifted with doing. So thank you, Carlos, for taking care of that. And it added quite a bit, I think, to the exhibition. So I think, I think that's awesome. So a couple things to make you aware of is the exhibition is made up of several classes, several art classes at Truman. We have a watercolor painting course. We have an advanced painting course. We have an advanced drawing course and an independent art projects course, all represented in, by the work in the show. So all of the students in those art courses at Truman have been doing projects throughout the semester and everything you're going to see is actually work that they did specifically for the course. Um, they're, you know, artists in different, different regards in their lives. I think some of them are art majors. We've had some conversations about transferring out to art schools. I know a couple of my students are art therapy majors. So this is something that is going to be a path in the future for them. So I really like these opportunities, especially because it gives them a chance to kind of build up that portfolio, to build up their resumes, both as artists, but also just as kind of, you know, professionals, right? This, these kinds of events kind of, you know, offer some of that, that opportunity to kind of get some practice being out in the world, right, as artists. So thank you again for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the subject matter for many of the pieces that you will see 
has been somewhat prescribed by the assignments that we've done throughout the semester. But each of the students has chosen within that subject matter their own specific subject. So if you see a portrait, for example, they have chosen the subject of that portrait. If I assigned a landscape painting, for example, they chose their own landscape image, right? So within these different kind of genres, artists in the classes have definitely taken on these different challenges and also imbued a little bit of their personalities with those choices. So that's something to kind of be proud of as well, because you're not just following a formula. This is kind of what you do in a college art course, right? So that's um, probably the gist of what I wanted to, to cover today. I'm really proud of all of my students. So congratulations to each of you and enjoy the video, which is that what we're gonna do next, Carlos? Okay. So let me share my screen. Can everybody see this okay? All right. Hi, thank you for joining us. This is our virtual art exhibition. What you're about to see is the artwork by my students at Truman College, and you'll hear them talk about their work a little bit as well. We want to thank the Haitian American Museum of Chicago for hosting this exhibition. I'm really proud of their work, and I hope you enjoy the show. My name is Bella Chapman. I use watercolors to do the portrait of a young boy. I focus on shading mostly on the face, making sure that the colors match the picture I use to go off of. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I got the hair textured correctly and doing that with a kind of dotting, um, kind of dotting tool and uh, Time was a factor in this painting. Uh, I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to continue with the shading, but I think it turned out nicely for what it was. And I think there is a lot of value in art and doing paintings like this. Just having a subject to look at makes you really connect with what the picture is trying to show you. My name is Jess. This is my watercolor painting of a butterfly based on a picture I took in the Lincoln Park Conservatory in Chicago when I first moved here. I like it because it's like the viewers peering in on this peaceful moment of the butterfly resting. I often find myself painting butterflies because of their strong metaphorical symbolism. And I think art is a powerful tool through which one can work through their traumas and create something beautiful and lasting in the process which is why I'm studying to be an art therapist and why I'm taking this class. Hello, my name is Claudia Maliki and I drew flowers and landscape. The medium I used was watercolors and what I was trying to get at in this picture is the focus um, on the flower and the background be blurry, like how I found in the picture. I really like how it turned out. I like all the highlights the flower has and the texture if you look closely and just the arrangement of paint, different paint colors. Um, what I think is important about art is that everyone has the own say in it. Everyone is different and it helps us interact with each other and all around the world. And it's just expressing your emotions and I really like that. Hello, my name is Ashley, and the medium I used um, was watercolor to paint this portrait of a man. Um, my main focus on this painting was to make sure I gave him his features correctly. I painted the features correctly. Um, I made sure that 
his scarf looked like a scarf because I thought it was an important part of the picture since it's like one of the only colors that pops pops up. And for me, art is important because I struggle with social anxiety and art helps me calm down and um, helps me manage my stress and helps me relax. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Moda. The art medium I used was watercolor. My goal for this painting was to highlight the white of the flowers and to give the background um, a slight blur. I think painting is a really good way to de-stress and to let yourself be as creative as you want to be and to get lost while painting. Art allows people to let their feelings out however they want and to say what they want to without having to use words. Sereya! Oh, it's Roy Romano. This is my painting. It's a butterfly standing on a flower. Uh, the background's blurred out and I really like this. Uh, it's got purple polka dots. It's real cool. The butterfly is standing on the flower, all cool, like standing there like, yo, what's up? It's me. This is my flower. Nobody comes over here except for the other butterflies that I'm cool with. That's it. Boring cake. Cut to. Um, hello, my name is Ro Romano. This is my uh, butterfly painting. It's a close up of nature, uh, like wildlife. Uh, Butterfly's got some cool purple dots in it. I use a really tiny brush to get all those nice crisp lines in the wings. Uh, I really like this painting because it's uh, it's pretty detailed in the butterfly at least. And I don't know, it looks like he's owning that flower. So I like it, I think it's good. Hi, I'm Jacoby. Um, this portrait I made is watercolor and I made it of Victoria Pedriti. Um, she's in You and Haunting of Hill House and uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. I really like everything she's done. Um, I'm taking this watercolor course to uh, try to find the medium that I really like with art because I think art is something that's going to be in my life. Hi, my name is Evelina Aguirreva. And for this piece, I used watercolor and paper. For my drawing, Quint of Change, I was inspired by movement um, Stop Asian Hate. And uh, uh, for my, my goal was to show the um, beauty of uh, Asian girl and also include symbols into my art. And it's like a lotus, which symbolized peace and uh, beautiful and everything is bright, is good. And also uh, wind, which uh, in her hairs, it shows a change of which, which should happen right now. In my drawing, I like a contrast and I like colors, deep and deep on the top and yellow in the middle. And also colors, um, uh, contrast with the flowers, uh, abstract around her and uh, very specific in the middle, a lotus. I hope you enjoy my drawing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kale Blanger. And this concept you're seeing right now is called Watching You. Now I chose this particular this topic because I did not have a special admiration for certain mythologies as well as creatures as and deities and gods and goddesses. So I chose this. Because I you because I use it for inspiration for a lot of my own personal work. And I used a combination of pencils, colored pencils and colored pastels, as well as pieces based off of my own collage. And I wanted to achieve this sort of galaxy looking back at you as you gaze up into the night sky. I really admire this, honestly. It's one of my, I feel like it's one of my best works. Hi, my name is Abigail Mendoza. And for this piece, I decided to use marker, pen, gouache, and color pencil. And I really wanted to focus on 
creating a cover art that was inspired by manga and anime. And I wanted to do that particularly because I really enjoy reading manga and watching anime. Um, it's a hobby of mine and I really love the different style arts that are incorporated in those two different, um, whether it's uh, manga or anime. And I really wanted to use bright colors for this piece. And I really wanted to incorporate many aspects of different mangas that I've read and different animes that I've seen into this piece, um, whether it's different symbols or the bright colors that they use and the very characterized um, characters that I used. Hi, my name is Yuri Salazar. I chose um, The Lady. The Lady is based on an actual um, person, but her image is distorted. I chose this because I like the fact that you can see something that is familiar, but at the same time, it's not real or it's not completely real. It is sort of like a distortion of something that we see every day, which is a face, a person, a lady. So my name is Sean Serrano. So I try to focus on, I mean, I use I use a black color pencil for my for my art. I try to focus on making it as much realistic as possible, including the values from from dark to light. My goal was to was to make the magic look like like a tattoo because I I mean I really like tattoos. <laughs> Um, what I like about painting is, I mean, yeah, painting is like how uh, realistic people could do them. And so it's like, it inspired me to try to make something realistic as well. Look realistic as well. My name is Jessica Tapia and the medium I used for this piece was graphite pencils. I try to focus on the values and the folds and trying to make this piece as realistic as I could. Um, over the years, I realized um, how much I really enjoyed using pencil. I, in the past, I would always just avoid it, but now it's my go-to. My goal was to be able to capture the softness of the blouse I was wearing, as well as the fact that it's being worn by someone. I think art is valuable because it's everywhere. Everywhere you look, it's there. You just have to keep your eyes open and look. There's always, there's just so much you could do with art. The variety is, I think, amazing. And because of that variety, that's what makes art so valuable. Um, my name is Agustin Casas and the medium I'm using in this subject is oil painting. The reason why I'm using this particular subject is because I um, just wanted to get a whole new experience in oil painting. So I just want to keep practicing more on it. And my goals for this to achieve is to make it look like the person it is um, to this person. Um, it is my nephew. So uh, as a new painter, I'm just trying to get with the normal with family and then try to get with strangers just because I like the complexity of the skin tones, trying to make it right. And as I'm practicing it, it made me find it important to know all the patients of art and how you could apply in the real world. So how you had to take your time and to make sure you could do things correctly. My name is Jin To, and I primarily paint portraits and uh, the figure. I uh, love experimenting with different materials and different services. Um, I'm really right now at the stage where I want to try new things and want to stretch myself in different direction and see what feels good, what doesn't feel good, what's successful or not successful. Um, so uh, in these two pieces, um, I've used uh, watercolor and uh, oil pastel and uh, ink, which uh, were all new materials I've never used before, before this semester. 
Um, so I'm happy with the way that they turned out and the way that they um, have taught me something new about these specific materials. Um, during quarantine, I feel like it's has been important for me to have different projects going on and, and trying to stay creative in different ways. Um, and so I, I feel like especially when we're not able to be together um, and with people that we want to spend time with, um, it's always good to, to be creative and to um, discover yourself in, in new and fun ways. And so I feel like that's something I've learned recently that is really important in my art. Hi, my name is Anna Gonzalez. And for this medium, I used acrylic paint. My focus for this project was the emotional aspect. Particularly, I wanted to make her seem as though she was in despair and sinking. This painting brought a sense of comfort during hard times. It was a good way to let go and see where the brush took me. My name is Alex Ann Shaw. Both of these paintings are painted using oil on board. I think that one of the interesting and valuable things that art can do is to cause us to reevaluate the world around us and see things in a new way. So both of these images were painted from thermal imaging or um, infrared images. And then I rendered what the thermal camera was seeing. Um, my hope for them is that they are arresting and beautiful, but make us unsettled and make us ask questions. My name is Johannes Wenninger, and I'm displaying two works that I painted in watercolors. The theme of my paintings is Egypt. I'm interested in, a, in portraying the people of Egypt, its landscapes, and monuments. Apart from working as an artist in the United States, for the past eight years, I've also worked as a stonemason for an epigraphic survey of the University of Chicago in Luxor, Egypt. As many Westerners who visit Egypt for the first time, I experienced a sense that I had set foot in another world, where that time had been turned back 100 years. In Egypt, the modern and the old are woven together seamlessly. My paintings aim to share a glimpse of Egypt as I experienced it with the viewer. And my hope is that the people who have visited Egypt in the past will recognize it in my paintings. I choose to paint in watercolors because I love the purity of the media, the, new, the, the unique way each pigment expresses itself on paper, how it disperses when brushed onto the wet substrate, creating delicate gradations. There's a long history of travelers visiting Egypt and recording their experiences and impressions with watercolors, and I'm continuing that tradition. Yeah, a really fantastic job by everyone. Stephanie, really thank you for putting together that fabulous video. Um, I think you told me it's on Truman's uh, Truman College YouTube. It's been posted on the website. Um, I'm going to make sure it's going to be posted on the on the uh, Hammock website and make sure it goes out everywhere um, for us too. But really fantastic job, everyone. Really, really great work. Um, I will say just really quickly, Roy, when I was doing the audio, you know, I had my headphones on and all of a sudden I'm like falling out of my chair because here's, here's this guy like screaming. I'm like, oh my gosh. But then I, I had, there was so much passion in there too. And then you Let's go. Too. I was like, oh my goodness. It, it was, it was really good. I, I'm glad to see that passion in your artwork. That's great. I figured no one else was going to be loud enough. I had to wake everybody up. Trust me, you, you, you woke up my whole building with that. So uh, <laughs> nice work, really good work, good work. Yeah, um, I, think, I just wanted to, to congratulate my students again after playing the video. Sorry, I didn't stop in time. This is one of my many faults as I'm teaching remotely as well. But, um, but thank you to Carlos, for, especially for putting the sound together for the video that just really you know, it added some poignancy, I think, to watch, to hearing the students' voices as we're looking at their images. So thanks again for, for doing that. And congrats, students. Yeah, definitely. I think having the, the artist's voice is super important. Um, definitely when it comes down to also talking about your work. You know, I got my BFA in photography. And so listening to all of you speak about what you were doing and creating the passion, the 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 topics that are behind the pieces, that's such a good exercise 
Um, and I'm sure Stephanie has told you that many, many times, but it's such a good exercise. And especially as you all move forward in with your careers, whether that be a tattoo artist, whether that be an art therapist, whether that be just someone who's using art as a way to de-stress during, you know, any time, even now during the pandemic and COVID-19, you know, it's super important to not only create, but to be able to talk about that work. Um, and I think you all did an absolutely fabulous job in doing so. Um, and that will help you carry on in the future as you move forward with your, with your work and with your art. So nice, nice work on that as well. Um, I do just want to mention, obviously, all you know already that this is a virtual exhibition for Hammock. And, and we've been working very hard and diligently this past year, um, the team and I here at the museum, to figure out exactly how virtual exhibitions are going to work, what they look like, um, and exactly you know how things get documented. So I want to show you very quickly, before we kind of open it up for some questions and comments, um, where you can find the virtual exhibition, how you can ac access it, and then also how you can share it with your families and friends um, and they can you know keep looking at the beautiful stuff that you made. So I'm going to share my screen very quickly. Uh, this one right here. All right everyone see my screen? Hopefully it came up. I think so. Yes, no. Yeah we can see it. Awesome. So right here is uh, the Hammock website www.hammock.org. Um, this is the place where you can find anything about the museum. The museum is currently open. Um, and like Stephanie mentioned, we are in Uptown, literally right down the block from Truman College. Um, so if you ever have time during lunch, on a break, before or after class, um, or you're just in the area, definitely come check us out. We're at 4654 North Racine. So literally right down the block. So this is the front page and obviously, you know, we have our mission, some oral histories, exhibitions, but right now in our event spotlight is the 2021 Truman Student Exhibition. Um, this is just a quick little screenshot and a little bit of information, but this is how you and anyone else can really access the virtual exhibition via our webpage. Also, this link is on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we do have a link tree, if you know what that is. Um, basically, it's just one website that has all of our links kind of incorporated into it. So it's very accessible. Um, and this is one of the top links right now. So again, you can put people on the link tree, you can bring them to our website. Either way, you'll be able to find the virtual exhibition. Um, so from the website, it says, you know, check out the virtual exhibition by clicking here. That is going to bring you to this new space, and we call it, and it's called Omeka. Um, and Omeka is a digital archiving um, place where you can put literally anything, and we've decided to use it for our virtual exhibitions. So just a quick kind of navigation on how this works. This is the front page. Again, just some basic information, um, what the classes were, you know, what we're doing. Um, and then also, you know, for accessibility reasons, we did put in a little bit about how to navigate it. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see all of your names, um, all the student artists, artists in the exhibition. And you have a couple ways to, to navigate um, the artwork. Number one, you can go ahead and click on someone's, uh, someone's name. So let's you know Ashley Martinez, for example. Here we go, here's Ashley's work. We have the title, the medium, the year, and then also right below it is gonna be the audio clip. Very easy, simply press play, and it's gonna play through the audio clip um, as you heard it in the uh, video just now. Another way that you can access and navigate this space is at the bottom uh, right and left hand corners it's going to have a next arrow and it's going to go in the same order that you see on the navigation to the left. All you have to do is click those arrows you can go back and forth it's going to have the previous and the next page and it's going to be simply the same idea where it's going to have the artist name at the top you'll see the image you'll see the title the medium and then you'll have the year as well as the audio clip on the bottom. So really easy to navigate. Um, I think it does a really nice job at highlighting, highlighting each individual piece and giving each individual piece a space to kind of live. And, and you know, if, if someone came to listen, you'd be able to be really surrounded by that one specific piece at one time. Um, so a little bit different than if it was on the wall. But again, I think it's doing its due diligence by giving each piece a, a little bit of time and a little bit of space to do their work. 
Um, and then Roy on here, I, I did put both of your uh, audio clips. Again, I think it's important to, to, both, to have both of those on there. Um, so Roy does have two. Everyone else has one though, sorry about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very, very easy to navigate. One other thing I do wanna show you, and this is right at the, at the front page again, on the bottom of the navigation where all the names are, the last link says gallery. Now this will kind of give a little bit of a um, salon style feel, um, more classic, you know, traditional museum feel. We will see all the images together in one space. Again, some people had two, so you'll see both of the images there. Really easy to navigate. Something that's really cool about this is that there is, and we do allow commenting, public comments on all of the pieces. Um, they do obviously have to be approved to just make sure that they're appropriate, but for the most part, people are really cool about that. Um, and there is one comment actually just on one of the pieces right now, and it's on winds of change. Um, and I think it's because, you know, this one is very, is very powerful and is very impactful and uh, it, it has a lot of relevancy right now. So someone did come in and leave a comment and I'll show you how to do that. You know, it says very fascinating work of art, original and artistic, enigmatic and philosoph well, philosophical, phil philosophical, real winds of change. Um, and if you or your friends or family want to comment on anyone's piece, all they have to do is fill out this short form, submit it at the bottom, and it'll go to our inbox to be approved. Again, for the most part, things are very appropriate, and we want to make sure that people are allowed to comment, especially in this kind of virtual digital space, so it keeps that human interaction as, as much as possible. So that is the online kind of piece to it. Um, again, you will be able to find this by going to hammock.org and then just scrolling down a little bit, you'll find the 2021 Truman Student Virtual Exhibition Space and there's a link here. As well, again, on all of our social media, we do have a link tree and a link directly to that space um, that you can share with your friends and family. Obviously, as you're accessing it, if there are any issues or something kind of arises and you kind of don't know how to fix it, um, definitely go ahead, give us an email, give us a call, and we'll make sure to get everything back in order as soon as possible. Awesome. So now you know how to access it. I do want to open it up to questions and comments. I know the chat was going off um, during the uh, video. I think that's really great. Some really good comments in here. Um, but yeah, any, any questions, I guess, for each other, because I know you all are in different classes. Um, I know we do have some community members in the room as well, if they have any questions. Um, and then I do have some questions kind of generally, but for, for specific people as well who've joined us today. So I'm just going to open it up. If, if anyone has anything, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, or if you feel more comfortable, go ahead and just uh, put that question in the chat. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, get a, I'll give it a little bit of time. And definitely, if you have something, go ahead and put it in there. Um, I just kind of wrote down some notes for myself um, and some questions. And so I do have a question um, for Jess Gall. Um, I believe you're in here. Yes, hi, hi, hi. Um, first of all, fantastic job. I think it's really great what you're able to accomplish with this piece. Um, in your audio, you talk about wanting to become an art therapist. You also talk about there, there is a strong kind of metaphorical meaning behind the butterfly that you created. So I was wondering if you could talk about what do butterflies mean to you in terms of what you created and then kind of what your next step is in becoming an art therapist. Yeah. Um, so when I first moved to Chicago, I kind of moved here. I was like, I'm so excited to start a new chapter. And then kind of a lot of like trauma happened within the first year that I was here. So it was really, it was a really difficult time for me and I didn't really know anyone. So I would just go to like the park by myself and like go to the conservatory, which is where I took that picture. Um, so I think that nature is just healing in and of itself. But 
I remember researching a lot because there's like the typical like metamorphosis aspect, right, of a butterfly that I think we're all familiar with. But there was something that I read um, about the process of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly where like he literally is like, it's this is kind of graphic, but he's literally like eating himself and using the nutrients from his own body to like become something else. So I remember like writing a lot of like poetry during this time as well. And basically this butterfly or this caterpillar, like digesting his own pain to become something more beautiful. And I just knew like in that time period, I was like, okay, I'm going to come out of this and like grow so much and like be better because of it. And uh, yeah, so it was just kind of like, I just get inspired by little tiny moments. And I think that nature is like a mirror back to us, you know, the things that we experience. So um, yeah, so and this is the first time I'm taking art classes. And I'm like almost 27 years old. So it's pretty crazy, you know, and it just felt like so much time went by. And I was like, No, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. And then eventually, I was just like, No, I totally I can't like, if someone else could do it, why couldn't I do it? You know, um, so I'm taking my art classes right now and then next semester as well. And then I can actually apply to go to grad school next spring. So in a year from now, so it's super exciting. I'm looking at the Adler School because um, there's not really that many in Chicago, honestly, and I'm trying to stay in state, but yeah, I'm super excited. I Art has helped me kind of like transform and transcend like the traumas I've been through. So I'm excited to be able to share that with other people and and show everyone that like everyone's creative. Like I feel like people kind of put themselves in these boxes where they're like, no, I'm I couldn't do that or I wish I could paint or something like that. Actually that video that Professor uh, Robert Stephanie like that you had us watch um, the plain air video, right? That was a good point that one of the artists brought up was that people would come up to him when he was painting outside and they'd be like, I wish I could do that. And he's like, you can, you know, it's just like learning to cook or like these like simple kind of skills that you just have to dedicate time to it and then you'd be surprised like the products are like the things that come out of it so that is my 45 minute spiel that I just gave very good <laughs> points Jess very good thanks oh, that's fabulous and congratulations on on your work again and I hope the best for you as you apply to grad school that's a huge step I really resonate with when you said, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm 27 years old and you're taking your first art class. You know, art is such, it is, it's in all of us, you know, and it really, you know, it, expression is in all of us. Um, and I think at different points in people's lives, it's really good to be able to express things in different ways. Um, and so I'm really glad that you're able to kind of take your experiences, whether, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, take your experiences, take that emotion and really put it into a piece, a really beautiful piece. Um, and now being a part of this exhibition, you have that kind of behind you, which is a huge thing too for everyone um, in this space. So congratulations. Thank you for sharing your story and experiences. I appreciate that. Thank you, of course. Um, Claudia Malaki, is Claudia here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Claudia, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, congratulations, and thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed your piece. I am a huge fan of color, and I know that in your kind of audio clip, you were talking about how colors and emotions kind of go hand in hand, and in this piece, you know, I see a lot of dark colors, and but I see a lot of bright colors, and so I was wondering if you can kind of talk about the emotion behind your piece and, and kind of what you were experiencing at the time of creating it. Okay, so this was a while back, a couple of weeks, like months back, but like when I remember when I was uh, looking for this, I was like looking through my camera trying to find something and like nothing really caught my eye. So I just like went on Google and found a picture, but this one really caught my eye because in the picture, if I showed you a photograph, like the background's blurry, you know, like when light is like in the distance, it's like dots and that's basically how it was. And from what I remember when I started painting this, I put a lot of focus into the flowers that are in the foreground. And I don't know, I just, I, I just get in the zone when I'm working on my art. Like I always liked art since a kid. And like, I took this class thinking like, oh, I never really learned how to watercolor. So like, let's figure that out. But I don't know, I just, I guess you can say I put the emotion more into the flower, which is why it like stands out more. And like the background is blurry, which but also like you can put your own content to it. 
Fabulous. And I would love to see uh, this in person because I know you're talking about the detail of the flower and I kept on getting super, super close. I was like, oh my gosh, there is so much detail in it. So it's a, it's a really beautiful piece. I love the colors. I really like what you're saying about kind of interjecting yourself in the flower, interjecting yourself in the background and, and having that meaning to it, that personal meaning. Um, really great work. Thank you so much for, you. for sharing. Thank you. Let's see here. I, I feel like the teacher now, Stephanie, doing this, picking on people. <laughs> uh, what about is, is Jacoby in the chat? Or in the, in here? I'm not sure. Hi. Hey, Jacoby, how's it going? Doing good, how you doing? Good, good. Hey, thank you so much for joining us and, and thank you for being a part of this exhibition. Really, congratulations on a beautiful piece um, and having your name at a museum. That's that's really big. Um, I was I was when I was listening to your audio piece, um, something that you were talking about is you were still trying to find the medium that you kind of like to work with. And you also mentioned that you think that art would be a substantial thing in your life moving forward. So I was wondering if you could talk about, you know, your experience with watercolor or other mediums, if there's one of them that you like the most, and then kind of where do you see art playing a role in your life as you continue to move forward with your career, your personal life, and everything in between? Uh, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, well, in high school and growing up, I was in art classes, and in high school, I was in an art program. So I was able to try a lot of different types of materials on different uh, papers and platforms or whatever. And uh, senior year, I was working with watercolor to make a kind of um, gore with like pen also. So I kind of liked how everything came out and things blended to make like a, a certain kind of uh, plane or uh, perspective on different things. So. Um, I liked how watercolor moved and worked, so I took this class to see if I could perfect some things with it or see how I can uh, make things besides like gore or whatever or have like pen added to it. Um, yeah, so uh, I forgot. I, kind of like, where, I know then like where do you see art continuing in your life? Because I think that's something you mentioned. You said it was going to be a part of your life. Yeah. Um, well, my mom's a therapist and my dad's an artist, so I've always had that kind of together in my life. So expression is a really big thing with art. And I'm trying to currently, I'm like 20 years old, I'm trying to figure out what best I can portray the things I have in my mind with art. So I'm trying to just bounce with different topics and different ideas and watercolor seems pretty close to what I like. So that's what I was trying to do. Very impressive. And I think something even looking at this piece, as I've seen all of them many times, the emotion, especially in the eyes that you created, the eyes, the mouth, just the, the facial features here really stuck out to me. And I did find myself just kind of pausing on this piece and, and really trying to figure out how I was hearing it and reflecting on it. So I, I really appreciate you sharing your experience. Really great work and congratulations again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, is uh, Johannes in here in, in, the, in the chat anywhere? I don't think Johannes is with us. Well, I just do want to just, you know, I'll pull up his, his stuff, their stuff really quick. Um, you know, when I was taking a look at this, there's so much detail in here. There's there's so much going on. And, and something I wanted to ask him was just talking about identity because, you know, his audio clip did talk about kind of the, the work and the background that he's done. But I listened, you know, as weird as it may be sound, you know, I listened to a good part of these, you know, class sessions as, as in between and I was pulling stuff out. And something I know that he mentioned um, was, you know, his identity be, between, you know, Egypt and, you know, the United States and people traveling back and forth. Um, and I think that is another kind of really powerful thing that art can do is 
figure out and help figure out people's identity um, and also kind of be a key role in identity making. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to ask him those questions, but I think um, also as all of you continue on with your careers, personal and professional, you know, use art to really ask the questions, not only about the world, but about yourself. Um, and I think as well with talking about, you know, being able to talk about your work, I think those things hand in hand, pairing those two things together will continue to allow you all to flourish and to continue to do really big things with your artwork. Um, but I think uh, Johannes's pieces were, were fabulous. Um, again, a lots of detail, I think his experience um, and his identity really played a key role in here. Um, and also another thing that I saw was kind of the palette, the consistency with the palette, um, very soft colors, um, very muted colors. Um, but I think, you know, lots of lots of tone, um, lots of light, lots of value. Um, so I wanted to, to call these out just as another thing that, that I saw. Um, let's go to Roy. Or let's, oh, sorry. No, I just wanted to mention, I know that he and several other students wanted to be with us today, but since it's you know, not dur during a time that likely many of them would either be at other classes or working, it only is officially the class time for one of our groups. So, <laughs> but well, thank you for those comments. Well, you know, this is recorded, so that's nice, right? Yeah, we'll get the that's recording to, to everyone for sure. You know, I think they all did a fabulous job. Um, Mr. Roy, I know you are here. <laughs> What's up? Um, so, you know, I, I really, again, I appreciate the, the passion and everything that you put in kind of to your recording. Something that really stood out to me here as, you know, I looked at, you know, everyone's pieces is the color palette. And something you specifically talk about are these purple dots that are on the wings of the butterfly. So I was wondering if you could talk maybe a little about the color. Is there anything behind the color um, and kind of what was coming up in, to you while you were creating this? Uh, well, I mean, that background in the green is all like leaves and stuff in the background of the photo. And so it was like the background of the pink. So I was just kind of following the color scheme. Um, the purple polka dots actually aren't on that butterfly. Originally, they were white, but I thought that uh, it like made the painting look a little like unfinished. So I decided to add the purple and I think it, I don't know, I think it stands out pretty good. Yeah, it looks really nice. I think the first thing that I kind of had in my mind was this like idea of just like all these like psychedelic colors working in, in kind of one space, you know, that red, the red and the pink is so pertinent. And then you have the purple, which is kind of like a, like a kind of in my mind, like an altered, Unreal, unrealistic, if you may, you know, to the butterfly. So I, I don't know, I really like the colors that you worked in with this. Um, and, you know, again, thank you for adding your passion into the audio and doing that second clip. Um, I think it worked fabulously. And again, congratulations on your piece. Thank you for sharing a little bit about what your work was. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then I think I just have just, you know, a, a few more things for people, but I do want to just look in the chat really quick as we're, um, coming up because I've been everywhere. So we have one from Grace Smith. Um, and this question is for any of the artists, uh, did you feel comfortable using the mediums you picked or did you feel out of your comfort zone? So kind of opening it up to anyone. Um, did you feel comfortable using the mediums you picked or did you feel out of your comfort zone? I know Claudia answered in there. Anyone else would like to answer in the chat or turn on your on your uh, sound here, unmute yourself. Uh, I definitely felt kind of out of my comfort zone since I, my whole life I've been working with like a pencil. So it was kind of different not having to always have like outlines and shading with a pencil like that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jacoby, for, for sharing. Um, Claudia says, definitely out of my comfort zone, but in a way that motivated me more to try harder and create something that I normally wouldn't do. Very, very interesting. Um, I am very bad at names. I'm very sorry. Morel Manaka. Um, says, uh, Mira. 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 I apologize. Yeah. Uh, it says watercolor has been my go-to. Okay, that that's awesome. Why well, I can't I can't use watercolor or paint for my life. So, <laughs> really, really great. 
Roy says, I love drawing with colored pencils and pens. So the watercolor is a little bit different to me, but I like doing things different. So it's a nice switch up. Really great answers. Um, I think it is important, you know, to obviously do what you love and do what you know, but also push yourself a little bit, get out of your comfort zone. Um, and I know some of these pieces had a little bit of mixed media elements to it. Um, Jin To, I believe, talked about that in, in their pieces uh, with kind of being a, a little bit of, here's, here's their images, um, a little bit of, of mixed media. I know they, they are watercolor, but I believe she was talking about how uh, she liked many projects happening at one time and kind of liked the idea of, of having many things to do and working with different mediums. Um, so I think that that's a really good question to ask. I think color pencils and like pastels go really good with watercolor. Mm -hmm. Definitely, fact, I agree. Carlos, I might add that Miral and Isara are both with us today and we're not able to, to have their video clips included. If Miral or Isara, if you have something you wanted to mention about your work, we could give you that opportunity. Yeah, please. Uh, sure. So the one that uh, the painting that I submitted was basically like a Tom Taylor we did for our class, and we just had to like throw in a couple of random objects in a box. Uh, I just I wanted to go for like a kind of like a pop art kind of uh feel. That's why I chose like kind of primary colors in a way like the beige of the carton and the red and the blue and then I added some green but uh, I wanted to give I wanted to give it like an old old feel and I usually don't paint like super realistically in terms of like still life and I do more like uh, surrealism with like color pencil and all but in this class I really started to do more like realism uh, and I feel like it makes me feel like more in control and it's been like really good for my anxiety also. So yeah, I've been loving doing realism. Yeah, fantastic work. I'm so happy you're able to join us and share a little, about, a little bit about your work. Um, I see so many elements in here um, and, and pulling from different kind of art spaces. So and it's beautiful. It's a really, really nice piece. Um, so congratulations. Thank congratulations. Thank you. It looks great. And is Zara, if you wanted to say a few words about your piece, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, hi. Um, so I painted her because she really <laughs> inspires me. Um, just because, like, you know, she's one of the first black women to be in the White House and stuff. Um, and I also want to get into politics. So she's just like inspired me to like push and be better. Oh, that's that's fabulous. Uh, I saw this, I was like, yeah, 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 I'm so happy again. I think I, the inspiration um, for now and in the future, really great work. It's beautiful piece. I love what you did with her hair that really kind of captures, I think her beauty specifically. Um, the purple, just everything about this, you know, really does a fantastic job for for the vice president, uh, Kamala Harris. Really nice job. Thank you for being here and sharing a little bit about your piece and congratulations um, to, to you for, for this accomplishment. Thank you. Let's see, let me just check the chat. We have about five or so minutes. Uh, if anyone has any last comments or questions or just anything you'd wanna say to the group, Feel free to drop it in the chat or go ahead and unmute yourself. If I might add that Carlos is actually at the museum. So if you do find yourself students walking around the neighborhood and just go north on Racine, You'll see it, it's, it's a block north. It's gonna be on the west side of the street. The, the hours of the museum, are, are they slightly different now, Carlos? Uh, so right now for hours of the museum, we are open on Sunday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 12 p.m. noon to 6 p.m. So 
in the afternoon, again, come before if, if you're around, I'm, I'm here during the week. Um, or come a little bit after, you know, it, it'd be love to, to see you all, show you around the museum. Um, and then hopefully, we're hoping, um, you know, we'll be able to next year do some more in person um, with Truman College. But again, it's, it's this collaboration and, and it really, Stephanie, your friendship and partnership to the museum is what makes this happen. And I'm very appreciative of the work that you've done and especially all the artists, all you all, you all here um, for a fantastic job. Um, and it's a huge accomplishment to be in an exhibition, and you're in an exhibition in a museum. So please make sure to put that on your resume because um, that's, a, that's a really big deal. It is, and we thank you so much, Carlos. Well, uh, I don't see any questions, so I'm just going to wrap it up. I do have a, a few more announcements before I let everyone go. Um, thank you all again very much for joining us this afternoon. And one more time, congratulations to all of you on a fantastic exhibition. Um, again, thank you, Stephanie, for, for everything that you've done. Um, I'm really happy that we're able to, to highlight and uplift all the student artists as we continue on um, with the museum and with virtual exhibitions and programming. Um, just two really quick things. So at the museum, education is at the core of our mission. We do have a monthly scholar series um, and the lecture is coming up this Friday and it's going to be on, uh, or rather it's going to be led by the author of the book, Chicago's Authentic Founder. Uh, his name is Mark O. Rosier. And he'll be joining us about a conversation about the founder of Chicago, who is Haitian, Jean-Baptiste Bointusab. Um, that event will be happening again this Friday, April 30th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can find any and all information on that on our social media or at hammock.org. And then lastly, May is Haitian Heritage Month and the museum is going to celebrate with a full lineup of guests, artists, presentations, and a raffle um, next month in May. So keep an eye out for all that information again on our social media or on our webpage. Um, again, thank you all so much for being a part of this exhibition. Thank you for joining us today for the opening reception. Uh, the exhibition will be on view online for a little bit of time. Again, we're, we're figuring out exactly how long those things will be, but please engage any way you can with the museum. Um, I will drop our email in the chat. If you have any questions, comments, or just wanna say hi, go ahead and, and send an email, info at hammock.org. Um, Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Elsie. Thank you, all the artists. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's beautiful outside. Get out there and maybe take a stroll down to Hammock. Um, but other than that, enjoy your day. And thank you all so much. I, I really appreciate y'all being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.